So let's talk more about the stops. So these produce the different sounds of the organ. Some of these stops are fairly generic and they work best together um, and others are usually used as solo stops. So each stop will have a number on it which denotes the pitch at which it plays. Eight foot is standard concert pitch or however near to A440 your organ is tuned to. Here's an example. Unless otherwise specified, an organist will draw an eight foot stop to form the foundation on which to build. Four foot stops will sound an octave higher. Two foot stops will sound two octaves higher. 16 foot stops will sound an octave lower. And so on. So the stops can be built into a chorus um, so you can have eight foot and four foot on top and two foot on top of that and so on. Or the higher pitch stops can be used on their own for special effects. Here is a four foot flute sounding on its own. So having the ability to sound different octaves at once means that writing in octaves on the organ is a bit more pointless than it is on the piano. It's possible to use um, alternating octaves as a rhythmic device. You'll sometimes um, see this in music like this. So that's quite effective, um, but you don't often um, see music written like that um, because it's just as effective to add on some of the higher um, pitches, um, the four foots and the two foots, and actually just have the control of playing at one of the octaves. The difference between individual organs is much more apparent than any other instrument. Um, so if you're writing for a specific place, you'll have to seriously consider its specification, that's its list of stops, as well as what playing aids are available to the performer. Those are the pistons and things like the swell pedals. Um, here is a quick whistle stop tour, if you'll pardon the pun, um, of some of the most commonly available sounds on the organ. So we'll start with foundation stops, um, and these comprise diapasons, principles, flutes and so on, which are the backbone of the organ sound. So if you want a general, usually quite mellow timbre, um, you can specify something like eight and four foot foundations. And this will be a mixture of principles and flutes. And they will sound something like this. Then onto the flutes. These are very versatile stops and these can be used in a variety of ways. So you can have soft eight foot or eight and four foot flutes together um, as, a, as a chorus, which will be something really gentle. Or if you add a two foot to the combination, you'll have an eight, four and two which uh, creates an almost pixie-like charm. Here's an example. And of course, a really effective use of a flute stop is to use it as an ethereal solo voice like this. So those are the flute stops. Let's now look at the string stops. Um, and these work in quite an unusual way in that they're usually used in tandem um, by having two stops, um, often a solitional and a voix celeste, um, which are pitched at slight variances with each other. 
so that the oscillations um, between the two pitches create a shimmering effect. So let's talk now about the reed stops um, and these range from some soft reeds such as oboes and clarinets to some louder trumpets and the loudest of all the tuba. So it's possible to use the reeds in two different ways. You can add them to the foundation setup, so your eights, your fours, your twos, and, and a reed on top. Um, or you can use them as a solo voice. If you're using the reeds as a solo, um, remember to specify where the solo passage ends um, by writing a new manual or registrational instruction for the start of the next section or to have the passage bookended by square brackets. Um, all too often, it's not particularly clear where a solo passage needs to end. What works really well on the organ is having a uh, solo and accompaniment. Um, this is something the organ does really well. Um, so having the hands on different manuals simultaneously. Um, unlike on the piano, you can also have the same notes sounding on two different manuals at once, provided it's not on the same stop. Um, so you have more flexibility in how the solo line interweaves with the accompaniment. Um, try to bear in mind which manuals the solo stops are located on um, and whether or not these are, are enclosed in a swell box. So any solo stop found on the grate, such as a trumpet or the solo tuba, um, would normally be unenclosed. Um, so writing crescendos or diminuendos uh, for these solo um, voices um, usually isn't achievable. However, a solo oboe or a flute um, can have more dynamic flexibility um, as they're usually located on a manual with a swell box. Um, if you're really lucky, you'll have lots of other lovely solo stops um, such as French horns or vox humanas um, at your disposal. Um, but if you want things to be adaptable to a variety of organs, um, you might just want to say a uh, soft eight foot reed um, or equivalent, which will um, enable the performer to best choose what resources they have available. You might try adding a soft eight foot or four foot foundation to some of the softer um, eight foot reeds um, for a little bit more body. Let me demonstrate um, with the Vox Humana, which is a really interesting stop. So here it is on its own. You can hear that's quite a thin sound. Um, so composers generally uh, write um, the addition of an a eight foot flute with that as well, and often a tremolo, which uh, makes the air fluctuate through the pipe. Um, and this creates um, a wonderful um, uh, effect such as this. Then there are the mixtures and mutations, which are stops which don't sound at um, our standard uh, unison pitch. For example, if I play an A on an eight foot stop, but I now play one on a mixture, you'll hear there's an A in there, but there's also a combination of some other, other a mixture as the name would imply, a mixture of different sounds. Then there are the mutations, which will sound usually at a third or a fifth above the note you're playing. So again, an eight foot um, A. But now I'm going to play on a two and two thirds, which you'll hear is sounding an E, and I'm still playing the same A I was before. And then a one and three fifths, which is playing a C sharp 
a third and a few octaves above um, where, I, where I'm still playing. Um, so because of this, you wouldn't usually use those stops on their own, but um, with the addition of an eight foot and four foot, um, they create a really lovely exotic um, character like this. And let me demonstrate the mixtures to you. So again, used in addition to some foundation stops, they add that little bit of sparkle on the top of the texture. By combining all of the mutations on the organs, the two and two thirds, the one and three fifths, sometimes a one and a third, um, you can create um, what is sometimes on some organs um, already exists as, as one stop, which is called a corne. Um, and this um, is, was used a lot in French classical music um, and makes a very lovely sound like this. The music of Olivier Messiaen is a really great place to start uh, if you want to explore some even more interesting and unusual combinations of stops. Um, so for instance, here is a passage which asks for a four foot flute, a piccolo, that being a one foot, um, and a one and a third all together. And then he, in the next section, asks for a four foot flute and a mixture combined, which sounds like this. And then in the next section, he asks for a 16 and a two foot flute together. So remember, we don't need the addition of the eight foot and the four foot in the middle. We can have the extremities of the 16 foot and the two foot, which sounds like this. So he, um, the, the higher pitched ones before um, were replicating bird song, some quite squawky birds. Um, and that's the last one I just um, demonstrated was his idea of uh, water droplets. Um, so you can get quite um, pictorial with, um, with uh, your descriptions and the sounds that you want to create by combining all sorts of different stops. Mm -hmm.